Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for leading us the first six months of the year. Thank you as we step foot in July. Thank you, Father God. We enter with rejoicing. We enter with thanksgiving. We enter with a little dance and a jig in our step in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your blessing prepared for us for the month of July. Lord, we speak to the month of July. We speak your favor, your protection, your deliverance, your empowerment, your endowment with power from on high. We speak a harvest of souls coming in. We speak the church established and strengthened we speak salvation to our yet to be saved loved ones in the name of Jesus we give you glory honor and praise Lord every trap and snare of the evil one for us in July we will give us the, the special eyesight to see it to, to, to escape it in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that the enemy will not afflict us nor the son of wickedness afflict us the enemy will not outwit us beg your pardon in the name of Jesus but your protection your safety your blessing your deliverance upon us oh God keep our loved ones safe father Lord I pray for every viewer for a great increase in wisdom in insight and in revelation in Jesus name I pray for all who are sick I pray Lord a rising of faith a rising of strength and your healing touch upon them in Jesus name heal relationships that are suffering at the moment in Jesus name bring bring marriages that are shaky back together on a firm footing oh God Lord outwit the enemy let them outwit the enemy in Jesus precious name amen and amen and amen and amen hallelujah glory to God well thank you for tuning in today don't forget to like the video don't forget to share it with your friends and in your social circles and don't forget to please uh, subscribe to this channel hallelujah father we give you praise so straight into the word for July the first thing I saw is is, is a month of double gates and double doors being opened and it's also a month for those who don't yet see this of being positioned strategically for the next phase of your life your purpose your calling but there's a, there's a strong caveat to it it's this are you ready are you ready for the new position are you ready to go into the to through through the gates you see um it, it's it's one thing to be given a, a position it's another to be able to maintain it and to thrive in it one of the principles of leadership is sadly that we continue growing in leadership to a, till we get to a place of dysfunction when we get to a place of dysfunction then that's the limit lord i pray a removal of limits from your sons and daughters in jesus name so being ready so the spirit of god has been emphasizing to me over several weeks about the principles of honor love and humility and i, I want to just take a, a minute minute to, to share on on each of these you see walking in honor walking in love walking in humility it keeps the hinges of the gates lubricated and oiled and it keeps you in a position of favor every time we go on to a new level of the favor of God a new level of the assignment we need to take on a new mantle of humility the old one won't work so it won't work so with every success go deliberately to God and say Lord I receive grace to walk in humility in the new assignment that you've given to me otherwise we, we risk being exposed we risk being exposed and people will see it around us all right so I want to just talk for a minute on these three before I go on with my word for the month First of all, love. Love is the mark of maturity. And right, you know, I saw this um, a, a couple of years back and I'm seeing it again, that people are lining up for assignments and they are being weighed in the scales of heaven. But in the scales of heaven, they are, you are being weighed on the weight of love. How heavy is your love? How tangible is your walk in love? So you, you need to understand that, that, that right now there are circumstance situations around you which are unloving or with unloving people. You need to deliberately receive grace from God that you would obey the injunction of Paul to the church in Ephesus, Ephesians 5.1, be imitators of God and walk in love. Receive grace to walk in love. Receive grace to walk in, in sacrifice, to forgo your rights, to be, you, you know, you, you know that you're in love with someone when you're blind to their faults, but you are, you are alert to their strengths. Walk in love towards all men. <clears throat> The other thing uh, about humility, and uh, I've touched on that already, but you, you want to ask God to take you through the mill if you need to go through the mill 
that you would walk in humility. It is crucial. He gives grace to the humble, but he resists the pride. Ask the people around you, the people who know you well. Just just talk to them and, about yourself and say, how do you how do people perceive me? How do you perceive me? Am I do I walk in humility, or are there traces of pride and arrogance? To give me examples. Be vulnerable and be open. <clears throat> The other thing is about honor. Honor is doing things right. It's taking, it's not taking anybody for granted. It's leaving nothing for granted. It's understanding the correct etiquette in every circumstance and in every situation. Now, you, you see, I'm reading from my notes here. If you just click on the link onto the YouTube, you'll see a link to my to my email. You know, you can give me your email address if you want to get the the, the, the full the full write-offs. So, when we spoke of honor. Uh, Matthew chapter 22 speaks of the, 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 we have the phrase, many are called but few are chosen, Matthew 22 and Matthew 20. But in Matthew 22, it's a man went to a wedding without a wedding garment. What does the wedding garment symbolize? He didn't observe the right etiquettes. He hadn't been mentored, he hadn't been schooled on how to operate and how to behave when he had got into the king's palace. And he, he, he was thrown out. He was thrown out. And so we need to make sure that we are being mentored spiritually. We want to need to be mentored that intellectually we are being mentored, that we are preparing ourselves for the position that God has for us. That when we get there, we won't embarrass ourselves and we will be able to stay in that position and grow in favor. You know, it's sort of David that, uh, I beg your pardon, Daniel, that the enemy you know tried his enemies tried to find fault with him he he experienced rapid promotion they couldn't find anything in him he was schooled well we need to make sure that we have Mordecai's Mordecai schooled Esther and she he prepared Esther for when Esther became the, 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 the wife of the king you need to make sure that the Holy Spirit is helping you you need to be meditating on Isaiah chapter 11 the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him you need to be asking for the spirit of wisdom insight understanding the fear of the Lord right choices right decision because God wants to promote you but he wants to make sure that when he promotes you you are able to thrive and prosper and succeed in the place that he's called you to <clears throat> don't look back <clears throat> You don't want to be one who looks back, you know, in six months, a year's time, and you saw that you climbed to a position, but you weren't able to stay. It. And don't be one who will ask it, oh, they, they were being racist, or nobody likes me. S stop all that. Trust God for grace, for wisdom, for insight, for to be likable. You can't be likable of all, but the favor of God can rest upon you. And just a couple more quick things about honor. One is, um, and, and again, there's, there's a link to a video where I share more about honor. But two things, I want, two, two keys to honor I want to share with you. One is, let there be some special ingredient in your worship of God that makes your worship stand out from the worship of millions. Let there be that signature that when God he hears your worship, when God sees your practice of worship, he knows that's, that's Sheila. He knows that's that 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 that's my special son that's my special daughter the other thing is um you'd be surprised how much dishonor goes on in christian circles even in leadership circles honor all people never ever speak disparagingly of somebody or in a way that you won't be happy for them to hear you speaking if the video is replayed and one day the video will will be replayed speak in honor speak in honor so just just two more things for the word word for July. One is, I saw a builder's prom line and as we come back into services uh, in many parts of the world, as we come back to the, the normal run, run uh, of life, you have a prom line and the prom line has adjusted. The prom line or, or the spirit level, you know, which builders use more, it's because there are new protocols for the new season. And so when you go back into the norms of life, Look at things with the new plumb line, the new spirit level that God has given you and weigh things up in a different way because times have changed, seasons have changed. The times of ignorance God has winked at, um, Acts chapter 17 says, but now he speaks for repentance. Then the other thing that I saw was a spear. I saw two things happening with the spear. Once I, one, I saw this spear and it was launching wounds that had gone um, septic 
you, you, you know, because there was there was there was dirt inside of there, and there are, in the month of July, I see that many um, many people who have been wounded and who have been hurt, the the the, 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 launch, the spear will launch the wound, and the hurt and the pain will come out. Do so with love, with gentleness, with sensitivity, particularly if you are a leader. The other thing I see uh, about the spear is I'm reminded of the story of Phineas. Phineas, um, in a time of plague, Phineas stood up and he put a stop to the sexual immorality that was going on and the plague was 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 see the, the plague ceased the plague stopped so father god i thank you for those who uh, particularly those in leadership oh god who will put a stop to certain um certain acts and say no that your fear would be restored to your church and your glory would come in jesus name father i thank you so much for each and every one tuning in today in the name of jesus lord thank you even as a uh, uh, prince uh, my son adds to this word in jesus name god bless you hallelujah well praise god well after recording the morning session i was on my daily prayer walk and the lord reminded me of a word that he gave me in the month of june it was the, the word is basically saying that just like uh, moses had to wear a veil to hide the glory of god that was coming from his face the Lord was saying that the days are coming when he is going to release the grace and the, his anointing on ministers and they're going to have the, 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 the veil is going to be removed and people are going to see momentarily the, the glory of God upon them, that there are apportioned glory carriers. What, what will this look like? It look like you're just in your favorite supermarket and all of a sudden people start looking at you because the glory of God is upon you. And as this glory appears on, on people and on individuals, it'll be like a Holy Ghost flashpoint where all of a sudden the glory of God will come in and people will be getting saved, healed and delivered. You know, the potential for this is massive that the churches will be birthed in a day as a result of this. I don't know the timing, but the Lord said I should have it in my word for July and beyond. But um, praise God. Here, here's my son Prince with his own word for, for the month. Uh, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Uh, do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Uh, I don't remember which scripture that is exactly, but I just felt that's what we've moved into now. Because you may remember back in March when I gave my word, I saw that God was doing a thing. It was like in four phases. There was March, April, May, and June. And um, that's over now. And I just felt we're about to move into the second half of the year. And even in that period, it was even lockdown for most of us. So I just felt that that's over and something new is starting, something new is beginning. So it's almost, it's more serious. So like we've been playing and practicing and it's now time to put that play and practice into work and move on forwards. And I just felt everyone's going to notice some big shifts and changes in this second half of the year. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. Release the press on. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this first half of the year. Thank you for everything it's been. Thank you for how you've kept us and delivered us. Thank you for your plans and purposes for the second half. Thank you that your perfect will be fully accomplished in us and through us all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, and it's starting to rain here, so we'll leave it there. Have a great month. God bless you.